So you're still trying to place this deal together, huh? I am. I am. And speaking to her today, oh my goodness. She, she, needs, she needs so much help. She needs a lot of help, huh? Yeah. What did she say about her uh, being able to move out and things like that? So she said she will need moving assistance. Um, she's looking for a home to another home to just rent. She doesn't want to buy. Um, she just needs um, moving assistance. She did tell me um, that she has spoken to the mortgage company because she is behind in payments. So four months of payments equaling sixty six eighty, but I just rounded it up to seven thousand. Yeah, so seven thousand in arrears. That's what I was going to ask you about too. See, it? see how deep this rabbit hole go when you start doing turns. As I yeah. say, you got a lot of information to gather. Yeah, and so she said she spoke to the bank, and the bank told her that maybe she should think about short selling it um, because she's four months behind. And um, they gave her, I think she said, until September twenty first to kind of make a decision as to whether she wanted to go with the short sell route. But they told her if she figured something else out, they would definitely give her an extension to take care of, you know, whatever she needs to take care of. She is open to um, the sub two option. She's open to that, to having, to holding the mortgage and having someone else pay it. Okay. Um, so she said the bank came out the other day and did an appraisal and they appraised the house and the property at 200K. Oh, just about what you said anyway, huh? <laughs> you said 197 and that's right there at it, huh? Right, right. Getting good um, at this stuff. Um, listen, I am, I've been in a year and I'm definitely um, a lifelong learner. So I'm always trying to learn um, and then trying to get better, you know? Um, let's see what else. So she said the house does need a roof. It needs oh. a but she said that um, the inside is fine. It's livable. Um, nothing major needs to be done inside, but the house does need a roof. Um, it has a full basement. It's unfinished, but it's a full basement. Let me see what else. She said they do rent in her area. And so I was on Zillow and then I went on PropStream um, creating a heat map to kind of see. And according to prop stream for a four bedroom in that area, you can get about 2,200 a month. I figured it was more than what that 1670. I knew it. So it would cover the payment at a minimum. So yeah. Right. Okay. So um, rents, what else? rents is about 2,200. You say? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, it's just not like, I mean, the only, the biggest issue really is that arrears part. And so that's why normally when I do these type of deals, I try to get that, authorization to release information signed off for them so that I can speak to the bank. You know, that's good. She's asking these questions, but once you're authorized, you can call the bank and say what other options are available or you can be on a three way. I mean, that's another way to do it too, but you know, you want to know what are the other options? Short sale is an option, right. you know, but that can take six months or however long too. Right. I've, I've done a short sale. It took like four months. Yeah. It could take a while. You never know, you know, cause you got to get all the paperwork in and play their game. Then you got the, um, you know, are they going to do a short sale? They just appraise it at 200. You know what I mean? How much they're going to come off of that? Right. Not right. much more, you know, <laughs> if they say, you know, they owe 145. Um, and so the biggest thing is, because uh, I've had a deal like this before where they had some arrears and I talked to the bank and they worked it out to where they dropped the payment and put that money on the back end of the loan. That's another option. I don't know if that bank would do that. What bank is it? Wells Fargo. Yeah, I don't know if they would do it. I never dealt with them yet. I've had a couple, but I haven't got a chance to get deep into Wells Fargo to know how they work yet. But um, yeah, I've had them do that. So like I had a house, the payment was 900 a month. They dropped the payment to 517 and put that back payment on the back of the end of the loan. So they said if we keep complete three months of uh -huh. keeping it current of uh, three months in a row, then they would uh, just put it back on regular schedule. Oh, so wow. I mean, some banks do that. So that's why, you know, short sale is an option, but I, I don't try to default to that one if I can. You know what I mean? If I'm trying to stay in the deal. So the repair amount, you said a roof. Um, so what are you thinking about? What, fifteen to twenty thousand in repairs it may need, you think? Or I'm thinking I would say um on the high end, I would say twenty. Okay. Because I don't know how much is a roof a roof is gonna cost, but we are in the northeast. So I know things cost you know a Probably bit. Probably ten grand or something, huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> That's for the roof. 
Yes. So, yeah. Um, and then let's see here. Seven thousand in arrears. So I mean, and that, and you said you had a buyer that wants to take it. He saw the house already, or what's their deal? He hasn't seen it. Um, I just kind of threw a little bit of information out there because I know that they wanted something because they called me about something else that they that didn't work for them. And so um, he said that, you know, they said that they would be interested and it's a ranch. They need something that's one level. So this would work out perfect for them. So, um, so their deal is to buy it and fix it up and sell it. Is that what their deal is or what was their plan? Yeah, that's what he does. So he'll buy a property, he'll live in it and slowly fix it up and mm. turn around and sell it. Okay, and so he's okay with the pricing and stuff. That's the other thing with the buyer part. Because you might have put this whole deal together with the buyer and the seller already ready to go. And stay. Right. Well, I didn't tell him, um, I didn't speak to the seller because I remember I wanted to get all the information. I mean, the buyer, because I wanted to get all the information from the seller. And so now that I have this information, I know she needs moving assistance. Um, and what that? what does that entail? You think, what, four or five grand? Or what do you think that'll be? Um, I think her moving assistance for her to find a nice home to rent, I would say and to put a little bit of money in her pocket because she told me that her car just recently broke down too. So I would say maybe $10,000, 12000 for her to walk away with. Woo, she getting a big check. I hope yeah, you're going to need a $40,000 somebody to bring that in to get that kind of money. <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, you know, typically two to three grand, that's probably like the high end. When you start getting up over that, that's kind of a lot. You know what I mean? You got to have some equity in your property. I mean, it got to be, you know what I mean? I know we do want to help them out. However, you know, just keeping it real, that's a big chunk of money, 12 grand. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm overdoing it that I don't know. Well, I you know. Up here, normally, especially if she wants to rent a house, she has a son that's still living with her, a teenage son. Especially if she wants to rent a house and she says she wants to be in the country. She doesn't want to be in the city. So I'm thinking she, she, she probably will need, a, you know, first months, last months, and then security. Is, so she, is she working or not working? Oh, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just wondering because I'm like, even if she got into something like that, you know what I'm saying? Even if all this was perfect, she could not pay it. And what difference does it make? You know what I mean? You're right back in the same right, spot. Right, so that's right. why I don't get too caught up in the, you know, the end of the deal like that. Right. You know, and like I said, 12K on a house that you upside down. I mean, not upside down, but you owe 7000 Why hasn't she been making the payments for the last four months? So her husband, I guess he was the breadwinner. He passed in May. Mm. And so, like, she's like, shit just, you know, came down on her. She passed. She had to bury him. They had to, you know, put money together for that to bury him. And so, literally, she's been late since he passed. Like, the last payment was in May. So, June, July, August, and September, she's been late these four months since he's passed. So, she would qualify for a short sale because that's a hardship. So, yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, so, so what do you plan to do with this? What do you think you would like to do? Um, <clears throat> I think that it would be a great opportunity for a sub two. Um, she, I didn't mention any numbers to her. So that 12 K that I'm telling you, that's just a number that I'm throwing out there, but talking to her, I think she would be comfortable with someone taking over the mortgage. She said that she's open to it. Her having, um, she said she's been packing up stuff, her having some moving money, and enough money to move into a place and to be comfortable and just not have the headache. Like she literally wasn't asking me for anything else, just help. And so I think whatever way I can help her, if I can help her, she'd be more than willing to do it. And so that's another question to pose to her. What do you think you need for as moving assistance? Or what do you think it'll take for you to be able to move? You know what I mean? Let her tell you, she might say, oh, just two or three grand. Or she might say the number you said, we don't know. So that's why, you know, all of this stuff is about asking those questions of them to see what they say. You know what I mean? Because that's how we're going to formulate, you know, what we can even do for them. If they ask for something ridiculous, then it's ridiculous. You might be thinking 20K. You know, I don't know. So let's say that, because um, I told her I would call her back on Monday, because um, tomorrow is Sunday and I would relate. I was going to ready say, is there a reason you're waiting on Monday or? Well, she told me, I couldn't call her back today because I have an event. Like, I'm super late. I'm supposed to be in the shower right now. <laughs> but um, I have an event that I'm doing today, so I couldn't get back to her later. And tomorrow's Sunday, and she's older, so I figured she went to church or whatever. But she told me that she was like, I'm always here, so if you want to call me, you can call me. I told her that I would call her back, you know, with hopefully a few options for her. 
Or you can so, even shoot her a text possibly. Just ask her, what do you think you need as far as to get you moved to the next place? You know, use that technology, see? <laughs> if you don't want to have a whole deep conversation with her, you know, it's just an option. You know what I mean? Because that stuff is important. You know, because we don't want to offer her 12000 when she said, oh, I don't really need anything. I'd just be glad to get up, get up from under this payment. Or I need a little something. I need a couple thousand. We don't know. You know, we try to make it, you know, be accommodating to them. But we don't want to overplay our hands, so to say. Because it's like we're playing poker right now. We got to keep our poker face on. Because, um, you know, and we do want to help them out as much as possible. I'm not saying to rip her off or nothing. But, you know, still, 12000 is quite of a chunk on a house that you well, haven't Okay, so let's say, so let's say, because I do want to have some options for her. So let's say she says, I need 5K. That's probably reasonable. I mean, if you got somebody that's willing to give 4,000 down, you probably put that deal together. If that person at 40,000 down is really going to do that. So that's the other thing. You know, they got to like the house and all this other stuff. Right. You know, that's a lot of um, things. So, so, the, so the best way I do these deals is try to lock it up with the seller as low as possible. And then I'll put it out and see what kind of buyers I can find from that point. I mean, okay. but. All right. So. Because you're still going to have to, you know, once you do get it under contract, you still got to make sure that that buyer or some buyer can come bring enough money to pay the closing costs, to bring the loan current, to, uh, you know, pay for all the stuff. I mean, 40K can go real quick. When you got seven grand going straight to the bank, uh, she want whatever she want, closing costs, whatever other costs they come up with, your fee, you got to make money somewhere. You ain't putting this together for free. You know what I mean? Because this is advanced strategy. You know, people pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to even learn how to do this stuff. Right, right. Because it's life changing. I mean, it's like people don't even know that there are other options. They just think short sale and that's the only option. That's an option, but it may not be the only option if somebody's going to bring 40K to the table on the other end. Everybody can eat off of that. You can make money out of it. You can get a cash flow out of it. Is that something you want to do or you just want to get in and get out the deal altogether or you want to stay in the deal and get a cash flow? I mean, if I can stay in the deal, then I'm open to that too. Like, I'm definitely open to see what this whole thing can be. You know, um, I just knew, like I said to you yesterday, I just knew that this was going to have to be a different strategy. Yeah, and there's a lot of people like this all around. There is, it's just as many of them as people for wholesale deals, but people right. don't know how to work the deals. And you can help a whole lot more people when you know how to structure these deals. Right. Normally, like six months ago, I would have been like, oh, I, I can't even do this. Like, you know, I, I don't even want to step into that realm. But now I'm like, no, this, this is an opportunity here. Yeah, the biggest issue I see for real is that 7,000 in arrears. So, I mean, so that's one thing that need to be worked. Either you on a three-way with her or she need to give you authorization to, to fax over to the bank. Do you have that document, uh, authorization to release information? I don't. Okay, I actually have one in the Facebook group. I don't know if you're in the Woke Real Estate Investors group on Facebook. I actually have one in the file section there. You can just download it right off of there and send, fill it out or send it over. It's called Bank Authorization to Release Information? Yes, and it's in the Woke Real Estate Investors group on Facebook. So uh, just join that group if you're not already in there and you can get that document um, right out of there. And so I would get that so that you can speak to the bank. And that's on any of these deals. I want to talk to the bank. I don't want to have to go to her, have, put more pressure on them. They got enough stuff. Sign off on this paperwork. I can talk to the bank and deal with all that headache and, and relieve you of all of that. And I know the questions to ask the bank versus trying to go, you know, all of that stuff. And so, like, um, and they'll give you the packet and tell you that, oh, yes, she owes $6,742.12 and arrears or whatever the number is, you know, they can give you that information versus you going through with another person, making it even more and more and more. Right. Matter of fact, so let me see here. So that's what I would suggest there first is um, do that. And then also once you figure out what she can put, I mean, what she needs to put uh, as far as the down payment or as far as um, her moving expense, if she say three grand or something, lock it up for that and put it as 3,000 pounds down. You'll lock it up for the purchase price of um of what it is whatever she owes for the for the loan balance you're buying it for the loan balance and you're going to give her some cash at closing so then say she says she needs three or five in the in the contract what type of contract would this be is it this, the same purchase and sales agreement with the with all of these um with all of these contingencies in it or how does that work yeah, there are some contingencies in it, but it's it's a similar contract, but it's not the same. It's okay. it's it's a long it's a the one I use is like a legal size form and it's two page two sided one page document. 
And so um, that, and it's a purchase and sales agreement and you can just put on there, you know, you're buying it for the loan balance. Cause you know, that balance changes every day because of interest and all the escrows and all those other stuff. So you would put on their loan balance and I can show you how to fill it out. There's not a problem. But those, all those documents for these type of deals are all on wokerealestate.com. I have all those documents on there. Any kind of contract you would need for any type of deal, for a lease option deal, for a uh, subject to deal, for a wraparound mortgage, any of these creative deals is all on there, wokerealestate.com. So um, what I would say is um, it, once she gives you that number, you can go ahead and put her under contract for the purchase price of the loan balance. You can put on there that you're going to give her 3000 down or whatever the the amount she says she needs, go ahead and lock it up so you can start marketing it. You lock it up, then you show that end buyer that property once you work out the terms of it because you're taking it over at the sixteen seventy a month PITI, principal interest taxes and insurance. And once you lock it up for that amount, then you can go ahead and start marketing the same way you would do if it was a, a wholesale deal. And now if you already got a buyer, that's the first person who's going to get in there to take a look at the house, make sure they like it work out a deal with them. If they're willing to put 40,000 down, 35,000 down, whatever they're willing to put down, as long as it's enough to cover your spread to pay that mortgage or to catch that loan balance up, that $7,000, get her her 2,000, get you something, and you gotta work out what the monthly payment gonna be to that end buyer. Right, which is? We don't know if it's gonna be 2,500. We don't know what he can do. He might say, I can do 2,000, I can do, he might say I can do the whole twenty five hundred, and I'll be glad to take twenty five hundred, make you know eight nine hundred bucks passive cash flow for a deal you did last year. You'd be like, man, I need to find some more of these. You'll be hooked. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So you said that. Let me. Um, I just one second. Where's her number again? So that's the biggest thing with this stuff is gathering all this pertinent information, gather all the facts. Anytime you come across one of these deals, we need to know how much they owe, how much in arrears they are. There's 7,000 like this lady is. Does their payment include the principal interest taxes and insurance? Um, you know, what's the ARV? What's the house work fixed up? And then, you know, if the condition is not too bad, you can usually sell these houses pretty easily. You know, it's all about who you can find to become to be that buyer, to bring some money to the table. To, to You know, you could close the deal with the end buyer before you even catch up the loan. That's how crazy this stuff is. I've done that before. You know, depending on how fast you do it. You know what I mean? Wow. Okay, so um, I'm just trying to process. All oh, I did have another question for you. Did they give you, does she have an auction date already or something? Or they just say it's late? No. Okay, so that's um, good. Said they don't have an auction date. They haven't started any foreclosure procedures. I did ask her that. Um, she said they haven't started anything, but they did tell her that about the short sale. She said that's the only thing that the bank has mentioned so far. Right. So that's why I would have the questions for the bank. Like I say, what other options are available? Do you have another type of payment program where we can pay something, you know, smaller than that amount? Any other kind of options? I mean, they're probably, I'm going to tell you what the bank probably going to do because they do it to me all the time. They're going to offer you the 40-year plan. And they're going to stretch it out over 40 years and you never pay the house off. <laughs> They'll shorten your payment, stretch it out to 40 years, but don't agree to that. That's what I'm saying. That's what that, I've been pitched at several times from banks when I talk to them. Oh yeah, we can redo it and restructure it. You just need to get these paperwork signed and we'll put it to a 40 year loan instead of a 30 year. And then you gotta, you'll never pay that thing off. But I'm just letting you know that's something the bank might throw at you. Okay, so I'm just writing down these questions. So what other options are available? Um, what, other, what other payments are available? Yeah, what other payment arrangements that can be made to catch this loan up? Uh, you know, make, is that reinstatement amount? Can it be put on the back of the loan? Are there any other programs that you haven't, you know, thought of? You got to talk to their loss mitigation person at the bank or there's, you know, one, one of the people at the bank there, one of the representatives who's dealing with that file. But like, I, that's why you need that authorization letter because it's better for you to speak to them than to be trying to put this seller through all it because you need to learn how to do it and how to do it when it come up next time. So that's... Um, okay, so... Back to my original question then. Say she needs 5,000 moving. I'm just putting that number out there. 5,000 moving to get a new place or whatever. 7,000 to bring in current. So we're at 12,000. What, would I, would I be getting the property under contract for that 12K? No, you would get the property contract up for the price of the loan balance. Your price is the loan balance, whatever that may be, $145,600.12, whatever that is, that number. So you just write on that loan balance. And I can show you it's on the contract. 
You can just write it right in there. For loan balance. You're buying a house for the loan balance and you're taking over. So that's basically what a subject to is. You're taking it over subject to the existing financing. So whatever she agreed to with the bank, that's what you're agreeing to to take to step into her shoes. So that's why it's so important to know what she agreed to with the bank. You see why, why I say that authorization and stuff to see what's going on? Because you can trust but verify all the stuff she said. I'm not saying she's going to lie to you or nothing, but I just want you to be in the habit of you verifying all this information from the bank yourself, not just, oh, well, they said this and they said that. They, some people don't know. They might think my payment is 800 and you look it up like, damn, your payment is 623. You've been overpaying all these years. I know I, I've come across that before. You know, wow. stupid stuff. You know, people don't know. <laughs> wow. Paperwork. It's all paperwork. So then, okay. So then what are the, what are some other good questions to ask the bank then? Uh, just mostly that. I mean, they're going to send you a packet back. So when you send an authorization in, it either says on a send over all short sale information, late payments, whatever. It says it's a blurb on the thing already. Okay. So it's, it's already on there. And they're going to fax it back to your packet and say, this is the interest rate. This is the loan maturity date. This is how much they owe. This is how much to bring it current. This is the payment. This includes principal interest taxes and insurance. This is escrow going here. I mean, it's a whole packet they send you back with all that information. So you don't have to ask anything, really. Oh, cool. Okay. You know, but you do need to ask what payment options are available to get this loan current. So then get it under the property under for the loan balance. And so once you get the property under for the loan balance, when you go to an end buyer, you make up, is it that you make up whatever number you want to ask for it? It's creative real estate, baby. Create. It's all whatever you create on this thing. That's why you got to love it. So you might get it from her for 145. He might buy for you for one sixty five. That means you're gonna get a twenty thousand dollar check on the back end later. You see what I'm saying? It's three profit centers in these deals: the front end down payment money, the cash flow in the middle, all month for month to month while you wait, and then a check on the back end if you sold it for more than what you put it out to the end buyer for. Okay. So much better than just a one hit it and quit it wholesale deal. Once you learn these type of strategies. Right, right, right. So in the beginning, I just I'm gonna. So in the beginning, so say I go to the end buyer, I have this property, blah, 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 blah. Um, they like it. Yeah, they want it. And I say it's 166. You can have it for 166K, right? Right. Covers whatever she owes plus 20K on, on top, right? Mm -hmm. So do, do I then say that they need to do a down payment? They're doing a down payment. They're not getting into this house without a down payment. That's the number one qualifier to get in any of these type of deals. They got to have a down payment. And so the down payment then would cover the loan that's owed, cover her moving, right? Cover moving expenses and cover my fee. That one chunk of money solves all the problems in the whole deal. And how much money did you bring to the table? Nothing. <laughs> That's what makes it so powerful. And then the third thing would be the terms, right? With the end buyer. So the first thing is the down payment. The second thing is the terms. What are they paying every month? Because it's going to be more than 1670, whatever it is. Right. Or you can pass it on to them and let them do 1670 if you're that nice. I ain't that nice though. Even if they said 2000 that's an extra 300 bucks a month to go to Hip Pocket National Bank for no reason, month after month, and it's a goose to keep laying those golden eggs. Right. And so do you have that money go directly into, I'm probably asking too much, but you have that money going directly into your account, or do you have a separate account for that money to flow into? I have separate accounts for my properties. So well, I said, so I receive a payment. You're in by paying you, you're paying the bank. Okay, and so then you're paying the bank through that that separate account that you have for this particular property. Okay, yep. and so the terms can be any anything that the buyer says, right? Whatever you create is your deal. Once you got it under contract, you have complete control to do whatever you want with that deal, whether you want to wholesale it, whether you want to uh, just assign it to him, say, I'll just say the deal as it sits. You can do that, and I'm doing assignment fee with him. Because remember, it's two sides of every transaction, that buyer side and that seller side. As long as you got a good deal with that seller and you get a, a deal over to that buyer that's 
better, you know, or you got a better deal with the seller than you got with the buyer, you should be good to go. That's all it is, really. It's just like a wholesale deal, just a little more complex because it got a lot of moving parts in it. That's all. Right. But see, that's the other thing with her loan. Her 1670, is that on an adjustable rate mortgage or is that just a fixed rate? You know what I mean? Some people's stuff go up and down with the, you know, with the times. You don't want to get caught up in it. That's why you want to know what you're agreeing to so that you know when you're selling it, what you can agree to to an end buyer. But if that guy you got there that's claiming he can put 40000 down, if he likes the house, you got a deal. If not, you got to find another buyer. Right. And if not, go the short sale route. So that's why I say time is really of the essence most of the time on these deals. That's why I say run the numbers, lock it up, start shopping for buyers. Because that dude might flake out. We don't know what he's going to do. You might find a better buyer, come bring you 50 grand down. We don't know. The okay. marketplace is a booger. <laughs> yeah. So then my last question would be, when you structure these deals and you have the end buyer put down a certain amount, how do you fit your fee in there without them thinking that, that say that $10,000 fee is going towards what they're paying towards the house? Well, there is no... Um, a, a way to really do that is more so it's two different sides. So whatever you work with them is you work with them. Whatever you work with that other side is what you work with them. That don't really go together like that. I'm saying so basically if they're going to give you, you're going to have to either mark up the price enough to cover that or you're going to either have to um, just tell them there's a fee. You can just tell them, you can just put it on there as a fee. It's all how you structure the deal. So that can be done through, you know, your real estate attorney. Is that attorney state or a title company there? The title state. Yeah, you probably want to get a good real estate attorney who know how to do these deals. Because once you write it up, that's the whole thing. Write it up, and then they, that's all that purchase and sales agreement is going to do. What me and the end buyer agreed to, or what you and the seller agreed to, and then you're going to do another document to show what you and the buyer, the end buyer agreed to. And as long as everything is written out to what you want it to be, they drop all the paperwork to make everything make sense. So then you think with this one, I should definitely use an attorney. I usually just use my title company. They, have, they probably have an attor uh, attorney on staff there. But you do need a real estate attorney who can conduct these transactions. There's not a lot of them, but there's a few that know how to do them. Some be like, oh, I don't really know how, or oh, is that legal? And I'm like, yeah, they're legal. You just don't know how to do it. You know, that's the right. thing you'll learn in all of this game. People are incompetent all around you. You end up teaching attorneys, real estate agents, wholesalers. You know, like, man, you ain't know that. That was basic. <laughs> right. I have, and I, I'm lucky that I have a few real estate agents that I work with who are also investors, and they, they know the wholesale you know, business. And it's funny that you say that because just yesterday, the realtor that I'm working with on my current deal, she was saying, she's like, you know, I know that you like to close at your title company. She said, but you should start thinking about using a real estate attorney to do some of these deals. And then I was like, yeah, cause she, so she has one. She was like, listen, I'll hook you up with my, my real estate attorney who, you know, who does all of our deals. So talk um, to them, see if they can conduct these type of deals, subject to transactions, wrap around mortgages, seller financing, where they can create a note. Cause sometimes you come across these properties, they don't have any loan on them. Right. You have to create it. You you create the note out of thin air, whatever you and that person agree to. Wow. Okay. I just bought one like that a couple months ago. No money down, 0% interest. Created a note out of thin air on a seven-year balloon. All I paid was closing costs, $1,241 to get the house. Closing costs really? on a $139,000 house. Where are you located? Huh? Where are you located? I'm in St. Louis. Oh, St. Louis. Um, got a for sale by owner sign. You just call them up. Hey, what's going on? And ask them questions. Talk to them. You never yeah, know what they're going to say. That's normally, that's normally what I do. I saw one the other day. I was coming from some town I was in. And I passed by it twice on the highway. But I, I don't know the area, so I didn't know where to stop. But the sign was there. And I was kicking myself the whole entire time driving home. Like, wow. Um, because <laughs> I love to see those for sale by owner signs, child. Fizbo, why didn't they list it? It got to be a reason, baby. Let me find out why. Yep, yep. We're going to solve your problem. Right, right, right. So, okay, then my, for real, this is my last question, for real. So then my last question. You sure it's the last one or you got two more? Because I'm supposed to be somewhere at 2 o'clock. And, <laughs> and it's 2 right now. <laughs> it's 2.02. So my last question is, um, so say the people – the buyer with the 40,000 is interested and they say, we want to put this 40,000 towards this purchase, right? 
how I'm just trying to think about how do I, how do I break that up? Because they're going to be thinking that they're putting 40,000 towards the purchase of the property. Correct. Possibly. But what I would do at this point for real is um, I will cross that bridge when I get to it, because we don't know if they're even going to put that kind of money down. You right. know what I mean? They might be doing something totally different. And so if, if, if the seller, if you can work out everything right with the seller, you can know what options you can give him because your option may be to let him just do the 1670 a month or and don't get no cash flow. It could be that. I mean, that's an option. And just say, I'll just, or you can just say, I'll assign you the deal over straight to you. Anything, you know what I mean? There's a lot of ways to make this deal happen. And so, um, and that's the other thing when you're doing a subject too, you're going to have to, I mean, you know, what I was taught, you don't have to do anything, but what I was taught, you're going to have to put this in a trust. Because that's what avoids a do on sale clause. Right, right. And the, it prohibits the bank from calling a loan due. Right. I did hear that at a, a REA meeting that I went to in Philly. So I would have to create a trust, right? Well, it's just a document. And I, and I got all those documents at wokerealestate.com as well. It's, uh, you know, you need a warranty deed to trustee. And that's the document that they'll uh, record at the courthouse. And then you uh, have a trust agreement just to show who, who are the beneficiaries of the trust. So it's, it's not that deep. People make it, you know, oh, it's a trauma. It's, it's just more papers. <laughs> I mean, it can be more, but, you know, it's not that big of a deal like that. Okay, so it's, it's created. A trust is born when it's recorded. It's created out of thin air, just like everything else in this deal. Created. Creative real estate. Gotta love it. Oh, goodness. Great. Any more questions for me before I let you go? No, these are all of the questions. So then the only thing that I'm thinking that I'm waiting for um, right now, did I spell that wrong? The only thing that I'm, think, that I'm waiting for right now then is for her answer. And I'm about to call her when I get off with you. I'm just going to call her since she ain't text me back just to ask her. So the only thing I'm waiting for is how much she would need to move. And that bank authorization, I already put a request in to join the group. I would send that to her for her to sign it yeah they need to fill it out they need to fill it out with, unless you have that information already um it needs to it acts on there for the bank the loan information the bank information fax number um some other information like then she got to put her social and sign on it because that's what it has to be a wet signature too whenever you do those so it can't be like a docu sign or something like that whenever you do those it need to be a wet signature to show that they authorize you to speak to the bank on their behalf and you just send that over to the bank to uh who was it wells fargo you fax that right over to them. All right. I might have to go see her then. Um, yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. So, yeah, you can either go see her or send it to her, let her fill it out, and she can take a picture of it, send it back, or whatever. I have had. I bought that. I just did another house where I never met the seller. He left the key under the, the rock at the house. I went and looked at the house, did all my stuff, and then I sent him everything by email. He did the bank authorization, sent it back a picture of it, and I sent that in. He did uh, all the contracts through DocuSign. I never met the guy still to this day. We already closed on this house, sold it and everything on a, on a lease option. So that, you know, you, you can do all of this stuff virtually, but if you need to go see her, go see her. Just to let you, I'm just letting you know that you don't have to if you don't want to. Yeah, right, because I, you know, I'm, I'm venturing into virtual, so I would much rather not go see her. Yeah, uh, so, I came in the game virtual. I say, I, I, I don't even know how to do it the other way. I do know how, but I prefer virtual. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I started local. You know, everyone says start local. I've, I've done a few local deals. But even this deal, she's not local to me. She's about almost two hours away. Oh, wow. So yeah. I'm, but that's what I'm starting to do. I'm starting to get deals out of my area because there are a lot of people wholesaling now in my area. And I'm like, you know what? Y'all can have that. I'll, you know, get some when I fit in. But now I'm like in different areas now because yeah. it, you know, it's, it's a lot. It's, it's, it's money out there. So. Yeah then I can send her that form, like say overnight FedEx or whatever. She can fill it out. Email it. Email. Okay. She can fill it out via email and just send it back to me. And I can actually, okay. Cause you said wet signature. So, but so she, can, she can either uh, email it or she can fax it back to you. I mean, you got a fax machine, you got email. She can take a picture of it, send it back. You know, it's all type of options, technology, embrace it. As long as her wet signature is on. As long as she got a wet signature on that document. The other stuff can be through DocuSign or one of those, you know, electronic signature sites. Right. Okay. So then I'm going to call her back right now and then get this ball rolling. There you go. Any more questions for me? That will be all for right now. I, I apologize for, that I keep bothering you about this. But. <laughs> Say it's a complex deal. That's what happens with this stuff. Right. But see, I learned it once and then I'm good. 
Yeah, I learned it in two weeks, so it don't take long. Are but I've done right? several deals already, so yeah. Right, right. You're you're like you're like the man now. <laughs> All right, I'm, that'll work. All right, thank you so much, Chris. All right. All right, bye. So that's how we do it, y'all. If you like that video, give it a good thumbs up. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Uh, if you have any questions about anything we just went over there, post it down in the comments. Let me know what you think. This is a complex deal. Um, and uh, we're probably going to have a part three. If you didn't catch part one, that video should have already came out. Part one to this uh, deal structuring in this deal up in Philly, a subject two. So do what you do. Be who you be. And I'll see you before you see me. Peace out, family.